Hi, it's Charlie from Silent West of Talkies with the next episode during which I will investigate why a silent star's talkie stardom did not stick. This episode will focus on Richard Barthelmus, one of the biggest stars in the 1920s who transitioned very successfully into talking pictures as a major star before having a career break in 1936 and then retiring permanently in the early 1940s. Like some stars that I've covered before, I first learned about Dick Barthelmus years ago in Chronicle of the Cinema, a wonderful book published in 1996 to mark the 100th anniversary of the moving picture. Richard is chiefly, or Dick as he went by, is chiefly remembered today as a silent star of D.W. Griffith films of the late 19-teens and early 1920s. But his career is far more reaching, interesting, and complex than that. He was an independent producer and filmmaker and activist and an incredibly talented performer. His extremely successful transition to the talkies, and in particular his work in pre-code dramas, has led to his career being re-examined by many contemporary film historians. During the early 1930s, when studios were dominating the motion picture industry, Richard was allowed to produce and helm his own films that made bold statements about various topical issues of the time, which was almost unheard of. How did his career go? get to that point from the silence, and where did it go after and why? Join me as I journey back to the beginning and investigate his early life, career, and his move from silence to talkies. Richard Barthelmus was born in 1895 in New York City to Alfred Barthelmus and Caroline Harris, who was a stage actress who eventually acted on the Broadway stage for many years. With the death of his father, Alfred, at age one, Dick was brought up on the road with his actress mother, much like Jack Gilbert was, and even got some child roles on the stage in the process. He eventually went to high school and graduated and went to Trinity College before working at least five years as an actor in stock theater. In addition to being a Broadway actress, Caroline was also an English language coach, and one of her pupils was the great Russian-American star, Ala Nazimova, who ended up becoming a lifelong friend of the family. Once Nazimova made the transition from stage to silent films in the 19-teens, she decided to do her old friend a favor and get her son, the aspiring actor Dick Barthelmus, a role in one of her films in 1916. Actually, earlier that year in 1916, Dick did have a cameo, extra, not cameo, but an extra role in a... Billy Burke vehicle called Gloria's Romance. But Nazimova was making her film debut in War Brides later that year and managed to get Dick cast as Arno, a major supporting role. The film was a recreation of her career triumph on the stage earlier that year, and it ultimately contained the theme of women receiving the right to vote, which was a groundbreaking and controversial one for the period a few years before the passing of the 19th Amendment. While the film was critically and commercially praised, its controversy caused it to actually be banned in several cities. But... For Dick, it put him on the map as a film actor and launched his career. At Paramount, he was a common supporting act. I'm sorry, at Paramount, he was then given several roles where he supported the great star Marguerite Clark, who recreated many of her recent stage successes as well. The first was Snow White, in which Richard played the Pie Man. If you don't know some trivia about Marguerite Clark's production of Snow White, in the 19-teens, when it came out, a young man named Walt Disney was watching it as a teenager in a theater, and it ended up kind of being one of the inspirations for him not only to go into the animation business, but to animate one of his favorite childhood movies in 1936. A little bit of trivia there. Anywho, Dick supported Marguerite Clark in several films, again, including The Valentine Girl, Babs' Diary, Babs' Burglar, and The Seven Swans. In 1918, he was finally promoted to being her leading man and rich man, poor man, and played opposite her again in Three Men and a Girl in 1919. Dick's first surviving film was 1917's The Streets of Illusion, which was a vehicle for Gladys Houlette, his later co-star at Astra Films. For Valor from 1917 and Sunshine Nan from 1918 saw Richard in two more important leading roles for Triangle and Paramount Films, respectively. He also was teamed with four films of star Dorothy Gish between 1918 and 1919. The films were The Hope Chest, Boots, Peppy Polly, and I'll Get Him Yet. All comedies that are unfortunately lost. Sometime around 1918, Dick's work was spotted by D.W. Griffith, who put him under a contract and launched not only his, him into screen stardom, but also solidified his lasting legacy as a silent screen icon. His first film for Griffith is also his earliest one that is easily available to view, 1919's The Girl Who Stayed at Home, a World War I drama about two brothers. In the film, Dick played Ralph Gray, older brother to Jim Gray, played by Robert Herron. Ralph, the more honorable brother, is draft is enlists for the war, I should say, and immediately accepts and goes overseas, while Jim evades before being drafted himself later. 
Both brothers have sweethearts, trench scenes, romance, and melodrama ensue before the film reaches a happy ending. Clarine Seymour and Carol Dempster co-starred as the girls that stayed at home while their loves were all fighting. Take a look at Dick in this scene with Carol once they are reunited at the end. As you saw, Dick ran the gamut of his emotion from anxiety to sadness of their separation to finally happiness at the probable ensuing marriage that would occur. The New York Times gave the film a good review and praised Dick and the rest of the cast. Dick next moved into D.W. Griffith's 1919 western Scarlet Days, which saw him top build for the first time. While it was also a standard melodrama, the film gave Dick a chance to play a different type of role, the hardened western outlaw that turns straight and becomes a hero. Take a look at this clip. Immediately what I noticed was Dick's total transformation into this type of brooding, contemplative, and as the title says, indifferent man. He's seen it all and still has more to think about. Again, he was teamed with the lovely, amazing, and talented Clarine Seymour in this film, as you saw. The film overall got mixed reviews. Griffith kept up the teaming of Dick and Clarine in 1920's The Idol Dancer, which would unfortunately be Clarine's final film before her untimely and tragic death at age 21 due to intestinal strangulation. The Idol Dancer saw Clarine as a young lady who likes to dance in a South Seas island that was torn between the love of a drunk beach bum, Dan, played by Dick, and an ill young American traveling, Walter, played by Creighton Hale. Ultimately, Dan reforms and they fall in love. Here, we have yet another new type of role for Dick, a drunken loafer that has to reform. This is particularly interesting because I only knew him as the strong, virtuous hero, and it's fascinating to see him play these other types of roles when I began watching these films. In this clip, you can see him as an optimistic, almost hippie-like man that enjoys the ocean, the moon, and the sight of this lovely girl. What was particularly riveting about Dick's work here is that you can see the subtle traces of drunkenness in his eyes, even as he's trying to be a poetic lover for the lovely Mary. The film appears to have been a commercial hit and got lots of critical acclaim, Dick included. The New York Globe wrote, Richard Barthelmus as the handsome young derelict made an instant appeal as he dared the audience to reform him. Lawrence Reed of Motion Picture News called Dick and Creighton Hale the only sincere parts of the picture. While Florine Seymour didn't get a nice notice here, she was praised by many other critics in her unfortunate swan song picture. Griffith's 1920, The Love Flower, saw Dick reunited with both Carol Dempster in another exotic setting. This film saw him as a Bruce, I'm sorry, not a Bruce, as Bruce Sanders, a plantation owner that takes a liking to Carol's Stella Bevan, the daughter of an innocent parolee played by George McQuarrie. Adventure, romance, and heroic acts ensue. In this clip, you can see Dick returning to his more honorable type of role as the virtuous do-gooder. This time, he's trying to convince Stella of his sincerity, love, and faithfulness. The Love Flower got critical acclaim, with exhibitors Harold complimenting both Dick and Carol's characterizations. <laughs> 